In July, officials proclaimed Union Station revitalization work was finally finished. But this area here behind me, one of many still being worked on. Union Station is now ready to more completely welcome people back to downtown Toronto just as we reopen the city in the wake of the pandemic. Words of relief by Mayor John Tory during a ceremony last year, coming after more than a decade since construction at Canada's busiest rail station first began. Originally supposed to be done years earlier, problems with contractors and cost overruns plagued the revitalization project. The formal reopening in July brought plenty of new upgrades. The revitalized um retail section, there's more space on the concourse, uh, there's better access to Union Station from the path, there's bike parking, and of course it really is a beautiful design. But walk in and around Union Station today, tarps, fencing, hoarding, all still visible. There's ongoing work to support the building uh, and make it even better. City of Toronto spokesperson Ellen Leasty says as the owner of the building, only a couple of notable items are left for the city to do. After the 2018 Young Street van attack, concrete barriers were installed as a temporary safety measure. Those will be replaced this year with stainless steel bollards that will run along the front of the station along Front Street and then down the sides of Bay and York towards the train track. At the northeast entrance, this tarp and fence in here for some time now. A new brass door set to go in. Inside the station, the bulk of the work being done by Osmington, which has a 75-year lease on commercial space to dramatically boost the amount of retail here. What have been the biggest challenges in terms of trying to redevelop the space at Union Station? Yeah, I think it, it comes down to the complexity of the uh, the project from the start. CEO Lauren Zucker says efforts to keep commuters moving and dealing with COVID all have extended their part of the project. We used to see 300,000 people go through the station a day. Over the last two years, it's been much slower. We've lost some tenants as a result of COVID. Despite that, there has also been renewed demand. Later this year, Sephora, Cinnabon, and LCBO set to open spaces by the end of 2022. An oyster cocktail lounge and a fine dining restaurant at and near the Great Hall also on tap in the next year or two. Even a cannabis lifestyle shop is in the works. Heading back downstairs, work continues on building a 35,000 square foot market, one Zucker likened to St. Lawrence and Kensington markets. Well, we're trying to provide variety. We've got lots of smaller spaces, anywhere from, let's say, 300 square feet to as much as I think our largest will be a, a sports bar restaurant that will just have outside the Scotiabank Arena. That'll be 10,000 square feet. We made a, a, a call that um, we wanted to make this of Toronto. And uh, the way to do that was to bring, you know, independent retailers give them an opportunity to uh, succeed. For much more on this story, including future plans to expand GO train capacity, go to citynews.ca. In Toronto for City News, I'm Nick Westall.